So this is a Swift Archway Hartwell. Just going to take you around the van, show you how it operates. In front of the van, you've got your jockey wheel, hitch and handbrake. We'll demonstrate these to you in person here on site. In the front locker, you have your two gas bottle tie downs. As you can see, you've got your one gas bottle here already. The pipe work that goes into the front of the bottle is a reverse red fitment, so you can turn it the opposite way to a bottle lid, for instance, to release it. And then on top here, you've got your gas on off valve, which says gas open and gas closed. To gas open is gas on, and gas closed is gas off. So that's your gas bottles in the front locker. You've then got your water pump connection on the outside of the van. So you've got the pickup pipe that drops down inside the acrol here. You need to make sure that is fully submerged in water before you turn the water pump on. If not, it'll just draw air up into the water system. You've then got the actual connection that goes in the side of the van. Very simple to remove. You pull it out, push it in. You've then got the cap that locks down in place. Down the bottom on either side of the van, you've got your two wind down legs. So it's in the same position on the opposite side of the van and you just wind these legs down and touch them on the ground. You never lift the caravan with these legs. It can potentially damage the floor of the caravan. Then got your heating and hot water flue. You need to remove this cover prior to igniting anything on gas inside of the caravan. Because if you leave the cover on, um, it can build up. Uh, it won't ignite for starters and it could also bring in the fumes from the gas system back into the van. You then got your battery box. So you've got your 110 amp laser battery on this side. Then you've got your mains power lead coming to the caravan with your motor mover power switch at the back there. We'll demonstrate the motor mover while you're here on site. You've then got your two fridge vents. Two fridge vents are very simply there to allow the fridge system to breathe. They take a little out some hot air and take some cool air in. Also, part one of those is a gas flue for when the fridge is running on gas. Motor mover and wheel nuts. We'll demonstrate the motor mover while you're here, like I said before. And we'll also talk the wheel nuts before you leave site so they've been tightened correctly. Front of the van, you've got your water uh, ac roll, but then down the side here, you've got your waste pipes. So the two grey waste pipes will go into these larger diameter holes on the outside here, and there'll be two pipes that go into these. The pipes go in and they'll drop down inside the waste master, which is where the waste water from the sinks and the shower will go. Coming to the back of the caravan, the flap that you see open here is your toilet flush tank. So it doesn't work like a household toilet where it fills from the water system. On the house, if we actually have to fill this manually by three and a half, we can put in three and a half litres of water and a cap full of the pink fluid. In the bottom here, you've actually got the toilet waste cassette itself. So at the bottom here, you've got a yellow handle which you lift up to remove the cassette. The neck here at the top turns out 90 degrees so you can tip the waste away. The yellow cap is a measure for your pink and your blue fluid. And at the back of the cassette, you've got a yellow pressure relief button so when you tip the waste away, it doesn't spit and splatter back at you. In that cassette, you'll need to put one litre of water and a cap full of the blue fluid prior to use. Back of the van, you've got your two wind down legs. Then coming up the door size, you've got storage for underneath the bed at the rear of the caravan. And then at the front, you've got one last locker, which I'm just going to quickly show you, which you guys are still cleaning. You've got the um, wet storage locker. And in this front there, you've got your three pin socket and your barbecue gas point. And below this locker door, you'll see your, third, uh, your fourth wind down leg. Going on to the inside of the caravan now. First thing I'm going to show you inside the van is in the wardrobe here. And what you'll find in here is you'll find your trip switches and your 12 volt fuses for the car or your trip switches for the caravan, should I say. So in here, as you can see, you've got your household style trip switches. Um, you've got your power switches for your space heater, your water heater, that's actually your electric water heater itself, so you need to have that on for the electric the water heater to warm up on electric. And then you've got your battery charger, which you need to have on at all times as well. If you're not sure if, when you connect it to the power on your caravan site that you're going to, if you have power coming to the caravan, hit the test switch here. If this switch drops down like it has just done, that means there is mains power coming into the van. If you hit the button and it doesn't trip down, it means there is no power coming into the caravan from the site you are on. Each of these fuses is individually marked with one, two and three at the bottom. And on the little tag to the left here, it shows you what each of these trip switches is for. Down below, you've got your caravan and car switch. So the van is the caravan, the car is the car. So if you're towing down the road, you'll need to have it on the car option at the top here. And if you're on site, you'll need to have it in the down position. So it is on van, and that will allow the 12 volt systems to work on board the caravan. If it's in the central position, your 12 volt will not come on. So you turn the switch off for a minute. That's your water pump switch, which I'll come back to. Test switch here will bring up the battery voltage from the uh, that's in the battery on board the caravan. 
So first thing we're going to need to do is fill the water system up. Now as you can probably see, because I've already got the water heater turned on, um, I've already got water in the system, but like I said, that is your electric switch. It's a bit like a combi boiler that you have at home, so it works on gas and electric. Once you've um, got the aqua roll connected on the outside of the caravan, you'll need to come underneath the seat on the front right-hand side of the caravan. And in here, hopefully you can see it just about in this video, you'll see a yellow valve. That yellow valve is actually the water drain down valve for the caravan. So in the position it's in at the moment means you can fill the water system up. However, when that valve is upright and pointing towards the bottom of the seat, it will drain all of the water out of the system onto the floor underneath the van. So like I said, flat with the floor to fill the system up. Once that valve is flat with the floor, you come over to every tap on board the caravan and you open them all up on the hot side of the water system. Bearing in mind when you first go to fill the caravan up, it's going to be empty or when you first go to use the caravan, it's going to be completely empty of water. So we open the tap up. I'm just going to let some of the pressure go off there for a second so it starts slowing down. As you can see, it's now started slowing down. So essentially, you'll have no water coming out of the taps when you initially open all the taps up. When you aren't using the caravan or when you're putting it away for storage, etc., we do advise that you drain the water system down completely. And to do this, you open all the taps up in the central position and turn the water pump off and you open up the yellow valve underneath the seat. So like I said, every time you use the van, it should be drained down or every time you take the caravan back, it should be drained down. And all the, so essentially you go through this process, process every time. So you'll open the taps up and then you'll come back into the cupboard where the trip switches are and you'll turn on your water pump. Once that water pump's turned on, and it's got all of the air out of the system, you'll have water running continuously out of every tap on board the caravan. So as you can see now, we've got water running out of the taps. And once you have water running out of all them taps continuously, you'll shut all of the taps back off and that will be your water system filled. Once you've got the water system filled, you can either warm the water up on the electric, which is on that switch in the cupboard just there, or you can warm it up on gas on this dial on the opposite side of the caravan. So the top dial you see here is your gas water heating. To ignite it on gas, you're gonna spin this outer gray dial to the flame symbol just here. You'll get a green light appear if it ignites on gas. And in a moment, it will actually fail to ignite on gas because the gas bottle is currently turned off. So you get a red light up here. Hopefully you can see that in the video just there, that little red dot. If it does ignite on gas and the green light's lit, you'll be able to control the water temperature between 30 and 70 degrees of water temperature, whereas on, on electric, it is a preset temperature around 35 to 40 degrees of water temperature. When you're showering on board the caravan, we do advise that you use the gas to boost the water system so it warms up a lot quicker for your shower. Down below that, you actually have the room heating for the caravan. Now, as I said, in the cupboard, you need to have the space heater main power switch on for this switch to work. Down the side here, you'll see 500, 1000 or 2000. Now, depending on what caravan site you're on, you can spin the outer grey dial round to, the, to either one of these three power options. To know what to set this to, you would need to ask the site's office when you arrive on your holiday. When you have selected the correct power source, you can control the temperature of the heater on this dial in the centre here, between 1 and 9. And what, what it relates to is the amount of elements in the heater you are warming up. The, more, the higher the number, the more elements it will warm up, and the more efficiently it will warm up. On top of the heater itself, you have the option to run the heating on gas. I'm just actually going to turn off that electric heating for a minute. So on top of the heater, you have the option to run gas, and you've got this dial on the right-hand side top of the heater that you need to spin round. So between 10 and 9, hold down the gas valve and hit the igniter. Once it ignites on gas, you'll have a pilot light in the window down the front of the heater. Once it has ignited, you need to continue to hold down the gas valve for a further 5 to 10 seconds, then slowly release the gas valve once it's been running for a while, and then just check your pilot light is still lit in the front of the heater. You can then control the temperature of the heater on gas on this dial on, the, on top. On the opposite side of the heater on top, you have your blown air options. So around the caravan, you'll see these little white vents, and that is essentially blown air heating like you have in your car. The switch here 
with the dot indicates the heat is just going to come out the front of the heater. If you select the wave symbol on the left hand side and turn your fan speed up, you'll hear the blown air heating kick in. We do advise for this to work properly that you leave the heater to warm up on, on the central setting here which is the dot so it comes out the front of the heater for five to ten minutes before you try and turn the blown air on because if you try and put the blown air straight on it will just keep cooling the elements inside the heater. If you want to have automatic blown air which cuts in and out with the thermostat on board the caravan you can set it to the A on the right hand side here and essentially the fan will cut in and out as it is needed. So that is your heating and hot water systems for the caravan. The fridge next. The fridge, very simple to use, you've got a power button on the front here, turn it off and it will turn off, press the button and it will come back on. The power button that is on the front. I'm going to try and show you the screen the best I can, it's not uh, showing up very well in the video unfortunately. There we go. So at the moment, as you can see, we're on mains power. To operate the fridge on mains power, you just need to be connected to the mains power and you need to make sure this light here is solid blue. If you want to change the temperature of the fridge on mains, you can use this button on the right hand side. And as you can see, it will change the amount of bars that are lit up on the side of the screen here. And the more bars you have lit up, the colder the fridge will be. I do apologise that the sun is shining straight through the window um, and stopping us from seeing this properly. I'm just going to shut the blinds for a moment. Hopefully now you can see that a little bit better. So I'm just going to show that again. So on the right side here, like I said, you can change the temperature of the fridge. To change the power source you want to use for the fridge, you can use the button on the left hand side. And first of all, it's going to go to the 12 volt battery. Now that is the, not the 12 volt battery on board the caravan. That is the 12 volt supply from the car you are towing with. And essentially what it will do is it will allow the fridge to work as a cool box as you're traveling down the road. You will not have any control of the temperature when you're on 12 volt mode. But the reason at the moment this blue light is flashing and indicating to me it's not doing anything is because we have no car connected at the front of the caravan. You also then have gas mode for if you're off grid. So you can hit the button again, go across to the gas mode. If it fails to ignite on gas, this blue light here will start flashing. If it's ignited, this blue light will stay solid. And then when it fails to ignite, you'll get a spanner and a nine symbol in this window here, again, just to inform you it's failed to ignite. Temperature control for the fridge on gas is the same as the electric mode. Hob, cooker and grill all work very much like your household appliances. The only thing you need to remember is the 240 electric ring at the back here will only work if you have mains power connected to the caravan. It will not work off the 12 volt battery. However, the rest of the hob, grill and oven will all run off your gas as you'd expect it to. Microwave, again, will only work on the 240 mains, but it works very much the same as a household microwave. Then the last thing we're going to go through on this particular van is the toilet system in the bathroom. So to flush your toilet, you have an electric flush on top, just here. You have a toilet full indicator light that lets you know when the toilet waste set is completely full. The toilet cell seat itself turns for your convenience, as you can see. However, when you're removing the cassette from the side of the vat, you need to make sure it's back in the position it's in now. And then below the toilet, you'll find this grey waste handle. This grey waste handle will allow the waste into the cassette into the van, so when you push it open, the waste will go into the cassette, and when it's closed, the waste won't. However, when you're removing that toilet waste cassette from underneath the van, you need to make sure this grey flap is in the position it's in now. So that is the Swift Archway Hartwell. If you have any further questions on the caravan, please don't hesitate to give us a call and we'll be more than happy to help. We appreciate your business and we look forward to seeing you here on site soon. Thank you again. Bye-bye.